here is we are going to put the outside back on today and this outside back will never be pretty because up top here they never refin it they never finished the wood as nice as the front it has no veneer whatsoever it's a pretty big mess here I mean as far as that I'm gonna have to follow the outline of this and come up here and they never were up there I gotta go over to here, go around there and, and so on. It's gonna be quite a bit of work, but uh, we shall get that done. Because really, it never was this nice ever, the way we're doing it. They, everything was always up against the wall, following the outline of the wood. Years ago, when they did this type of work, it was just done in black. I've seen black cambric you would see or anything. It just it was up against the wall. They didn't care. Nowadays, things are still up against the wall, but they want things nicer. And in some instances, they're exposed. It'll look a, a thousand times better when we're done here. Looking at that line, I put a chalk line in there and trying to cover up the most of it, but there's no way I could cover up all that uh, to get it to look decent. But we'll do it right, we get to show you how it's done. So you'll be the smartest person at the Christmas party or the Halloween party for that. And we got a nice view here of uh, looking down. We're following the outline of the wood. And over here, got that bracket causing some problems, but we'll have to hand stitch that. Up top, we're gonna to use a modern type material. In the old days, you'd have to hand stitch all of that. And that would take a long time to do that. Not that we have anything against time, but the ply grip will do a nice job on that. And people, yeah, with their own pieces, with the more modern stuff uh, in their house, it'll, they'll get an education in that. This is called ply grip. And this come about, I think probably in the 1950s. Up close you get to see it. And right here, these holes here is where we put the, the nail or staple. You have to position the, the head of the staple gun so it doesn't hit the metal. And if you're good at it like I am, you won't um, mess up the staple hit, you know, going off center all the time. And then you got these little teeth. So you staple this to the wood and then you take the fabric and you fold it over the top the teeth grab it and then you push it you hammer it closed and the teeth end up pre uh, peening over and locking in the fabric but it can go around corners and stuff too and we're only going to go from this point here putting it right to the to the line of the thread they anticipated people were going to sew it by hand, and so things were, it was okay to, to make things that way. So this also, it's holding that welt up against the wood. When you push that, this right up against the, well, the, the line there, it holds it so it's tight. You know, you're looking at this piece here, at the back here, there's a chunk missing here. There's a story behind that. Some kid probably got a beaten because he messed up the, the back of the furniture over here or the whole house collapsed. It took a chunk of the sofa apart. You don't even know. Most of these shots are gonna really come out good from the top though, but this is for nice smooth curves, but when you've got a sharp curve like a sharp like that, what they're doing here, it requires a fancy cut and it might need a stitch or something, one stitch there. It's difficult to work with sometimes this stuff. It's I'm not a big fan of it. My dad, he did not like this stuff. All right, so we're gonna end it right there. And we're gonna hand stitch this here. 
All right. We'll take this and we fold it down halfway and then we take the fabric and we're gonna put it over the top and push it in like this. And it's open and the teeth will grip. So I'm just doing it, not all the way, just enough. You do it years, you'll learn the, the right way to do it. Upholsters, if you're, they know all about this stuff, called ply grip. It comes in various some um, thicknesses too, where if the metal is thicker, if it needs more strength. And the problem with that is if you go too heavy with areas like this, it's hard to form around it and it's a, kind of a hard to work with. We're getting in preparation to put the fabric over the top. I'm gonna cut a piece of polyester and then show up with it miraculously. This is half inch polyester. We're gonna put some cotton in the, in the back of that. Try to smooth it out the best we can with those brackets. You know, years ago, cotton was, was cheap in relation to polyester. And then as, as um, uh, labor cost, land cost, Fertilizer, all that stuff, insurances and stuff, cotton got to be very expensive. Polyester in relation to, to, to cotton now, polyester is uh, reasonable, fairly reasonable, and cotton's expensive, but it's like switched over the years. We're stapling just outside of, of that uh, ply grip. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, but you have to do it, you know, and like we're doing outsides right here. In the early days of upholstery, in order to protect the trade, somebody would do the tear down, somebody would fit, would tie the spring, somebody different would tie the springs, and somebody would cut, be working the table, cutting it, uh, you know, the fabric and so on and measuring it. Another person would be sewing on the sewing machine, and then somebody would be doing outsides, what I'm doing right now. And they were all different people, and they did that to protect the trade. They didn't want to have a, com a competitor. So that's what they did in this business. And like, anytime that happened, they do that, it works out very badly. And I can tell you other industries have done things like that where it's killed the business, where there's nobody to do the work. The old people, nobody knew how to do the whole thing. And, or some people did, like my dad and me, and, but it just killed it. There's so much work to be done and there's nobody to do it. They're all old men. And I'm like the youngest one. Here, you know, when I started, I was one of the youngest ones. All righty. So we want to make sure that we have a straight line. We want, everything looks nice straight, okay? These little chalk lines I put on this line here, we're gonna line it up with the wood here. The top, well, you got it going like that. You, you, good luck with that, trying to, to, to get it off the top of that. So we line it up with the edge here. And we're gonna put a pin, a staple, halfway in on there. And I'll hold it straight. We're gonna tug on it with that ply grip. So in the end, we're gonna get it tight. We're gonna pull these out. When we're done with the top over here, and I'm taking the chalk and I'm feeling through on that where that metal strip is. You can feel it. Um, so what I'm trimming it right up, right up to the edge of that so that when the fabric rolls over, it's just the fabric rolling over grabbing the teeth. All right. Now comes the ply grip part. That's not the easiest to work with. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my needle and I'm pushing it in inside to hook on those teeth. I'll push on it at the same time. I tuck everything in and then I close it up. So now here, I'm tucking it in again and we're putting a little pressure on it, but getting it started. And when I'm hitting it, 
it closes it up. It's a nice set, Lux. That looks a little bit more finished than, you know, having that straight line going across like I thought, but then you had a big screw hole there. Yeah, that's how it originally was done, but we have to make things a little nicer sometimes. It's like paint jobs on cars. You get an old car restored. If you saw the paint jobs on, a, on, a, on an old Challenger or GTO back in the day when they were brand new, they weren't, you would not be happy with it if you paid $50,000 to have it restored. So they put way better paint jobs on these cars uh, than they were when they were new. And it carries over to this type of stuff, people's expectations. Like I said, in the old days, they, uh, they were happy with uh, having a shop apron in the back and the outside back that was monogrammed, you know, that we took off. If you remember, that's where that shop apron came from, was, was right over in that area over there. And at the time I pulled it off, I just thought it was a, you know, it was ticking, it was mattress ticking. And the blue striped ticking, which is, you know, you can still buy that stuff. And some people like that on their furniture. They, you, you, you upholster it. But this is hardly the first outside back you'd ever want to do. With this type of curve and stuff, it's very difficult to do for a novice because it's the fabric has got that rib in the back you've got a back brace you got a curve uh, it's a lot of work try to keep it straight it's right pull too tight you can see the line go on So I'm gonna do is I'm pulling it, and I wanna keep the line. So I got the line, it's right on the edge. I put that pattern, and I can pull it. Now over here, we're gonna to have to do a little cut around the leg, because it's got this support here. We got something written here, WC. We got new marking that we never noticed before. WC. What I'm doing right now is I'm folding this and I'm just pinning it again. This is going to hold it in place while I sew it. Just pinning it. And the staples don't leave any marks in the fabric at all. They, it's like little pins. I'm just putting them halfway in, or less than that even. Because we got this, the wood right up against that welt here. We don't, we don't have any place to put that ply grip there. And even the welt has a tough time fit. That's coming straight off that, that support, coming straight down, and we have to sew it. All right, so now we're gonna stitch this here. I'm gonna go get my needle and thread, and you'll see me sew again. You'll see, I can sew real fast too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm anchoring. I'm I made a knot on the thread, I made a knot, and I doubled up the knot on top of the knot, so I made it bigger so it won't pull through. And, I, and I'm gonna hide it. And I'm going to pull it in like this, and you can't see it. See? It's gone. And I'm going to pull it in like this, and you can't see it. See? It's gone. But it's anchored. And right, I pull it this way, and I can see where it is. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to go right underneath it again, go through it. Once it's anchored, it's in there good. Pull it down. You don't want to. You want to have your needle come out where the sewing machine thread is on the welt. It's a, little, it's a different stitch than we than we did when we made the the edge on the other episodes. The edge on the seat of the burlap. A lot of upholsters don't even know how to sew by hand. It's it's like a real lost art. So what they do sometimes to make do is they'll, they won't even do this. They'll try the ply grip, doing it right there. It may come out okay. They work their ass off to get it to work. 
This way would have been a lot easier. Or they'll take brass nails and they'll just do it like this. Or they won't even do it, be able to do it the way we did it. Because, they, you know, we, keep, we kept it in one piece. So you get a little bit of pucker with that around there because you can see with the light, because it's a, it's a, it's a rigid fabric with these, these red threads going through that we talked about right here. It tends to not want to take curves very well. But we can put a little steam on that and it will relax it a little bit, it should. Maybe one of our watchers can put this mystery together. Maybe they could find out and research in Dayville, Connecticut, a gentleman that was doing the, uh, furniture, making furniture, or, and they could put that together. If somebody's from that town, they have uh, maybe a, some well-known person. Usually business people were people that were within the town that could be the selectmen or something. Um, 1828, there could be somebody like that in business. And so you double it, I fold it, double it, it makes it stronger so the staples don't blow through. Was it seven already? God, time flies. This keeps the, what happens, the reason why we use this for is when the materials break down, like the, the pig hair in the old days, the cotton, the burlap, over time, this stuff is gonna start to, to break down when people go up and down on a thing and little pieces will come off and stuff and it'll go on the floor. And this is called cambric and it's a dust cover. With modern materials today, it's not as important but it's still a part of a nice job, doing a nice job. Take a shot of these original wheels, brass, brass casters. Other types of wheels that they would use for steel, wood, and porcelain. Porce white porcelain wheels look really sharp. I tend to like those myself. And they're strong too, you believe it or not, they're pretty strong. I mean, you drop it hard enough, you'll break them, but it, uh, they're pretty good. A lot of times when they made these legs, and just like the pieces in the, the back that we worked on, they're different sizes. They have a different shape sometimes, everything. So when you do it, they can be a little different. here too, counting how many we have on each leg. So when you put them in too, they tend to bend a little bit, the stem, so you gotta hit them straight like if you were just pounding in a regular nail. See if we can get it. Sometimes these legs are different shapes. You measure them, they're gonna be different. So we try to make things pleasing to the eye. and right, I'm positioning the nails that I want to see them so they're nice and spaced out right. That's what I'm doing. Okay, just grab it from the legs on the bottom. And I'll, I'll put mine down and I'll come over there and put yours. Good. It's not perfect as far as the wood, but it still looks a thousand times better. It really does. And it doesn't, you know, it's got the original, it's cleaned up. But if you make something too perfect, you know, it's like cars. If you got them too perfect, you never want to drive them. 
They're called trailer queens. We, you know, I like to make furniture that people can use, you know? So, this here is GIMP. And I think we've talked about it before in the old sense. This is the color that we chose, and it's gonna look really nice. It's got a nice look about it. When we were taking it apart, before when we first started this, and we're at the very end right now of this project, that the people, that how many people have walked by this piece and didn't see its potential? Um, and like I said, you take something that nobody wants and you make it to something that they desire. I think if somebody do this were to do this with a, an old car, people love those shows that they see an old car rotting out in the field and they turn it and they give it a second chance in life. And that's what we did with this. And the stories that this piece can tell. I'm sure it was in the house when the radio was developed. Um, when something was broadcast over it. it, could be World War I, when the house was first electrified. Houses that didn't have any indoor plumbing and it didn't have any electricity in it. So everything has a story. And this can tell some wicked stories. If this thing could talk, somebody could have died on this thing. know. Maybe the guy that made it died on it. Who knows? But we're putting this old lady's jewelry back on. types of nails that we have. These are what they call a French natural nail. In the old days there was these companies they used to make a, quite a bit different nails. Now there's not really many types of nails out there and it's, it's just down to the more popular ones. This is the standard length stem meaning the, the, the size of the nail. When you deal with old pieces and stuff that's been reupholstered many, many times, we use this nail. This here is um, a French nail. They both have the same appearance on the top. It's a brass nail. It's a brass plated nail that uh, over steel. But we're going to use the longer stem one on this because of the punky wood. And this company used to be made used to make these nails in Connecticut. It was Turner and Seymour. And it used to be in Connecticut. I remember seeing the boxes when I was a kid. I don't know if they're still around anymore. So we're gonna grab a handful here, get down on my knees, and start putting them in. Start in the corner here. And I'm fast with this, because I've done, I've probably done like 10 million nails in my life. You can see how, you can feel when the nail really grabs and when it don't grab. So when it don't grab, you go on an angle like this, but ultimately you're gonna be, come down flat. You gotta grab something good. If you don't put it in good, <laughs> um, if you don't put the nail in good, um, over time somebody's sitting in vibration, they'll come out just by vibration. But also the gimp, has a scroll design on it, and I can kind of space it out. I was hitting a nail going down this way on the inside. It just happened to catch it. You hit it hard enough, it'll go to the side of it, usually. And if you bend one, you pull it out, and you put, it, put another new one in. Sometimes the wood is so hard on 
Even the old pieces sometimes, the wood is still very, very hard, oak and stuff. Even though this is an older piece and everything, really old, where we live here in New England, this is, these pieces are plentiful. You can find them at every auction house, every classified, you know, you can find pieces that are similar to this. They sold lots of them. Now certain types of pieces of furniture, our nail work is everywhere. They could be head to head around the entire piece. You could be working for days sometimes, putting nails in. And sometimes, you know, um, some people, they, it's very, very tiring. You know, when you, you're done with these things, you're working always, you're gonna, these old finishes are very delicate too. The shellac is very forgiving, but still, you're gonna, a slip of the hammer, or even the fabric rubbing on the old finish will cause it to leave a mark. So you always go over it again and you touch it up before you, when you're all done. You know, in movie land, you know, it, it takes some, it looks like it goes quick, but it's, it's consuming. These are okay up there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the steamer on. We have a few little wrinkles. When you hit it, you'll see it relax. It should relax. I'm not gonna go crazy with it because the wood, it can turn white. I'm just gonna hit it quick. All right, so I'm gonna hear. See how it's gone? Now you can do this side here too. And then right here where it comes out a little bit, you can flatten it a little bit right there. Okay. boys we are done and well you know these things uh, what we conquered right here it, it isn't exactly an easy job for the novice to do but at least it gives you an idea what it takes to bring something like this back and to see inside history of how they made things and uh, you were able to see it in real time and to see what it takes and um, the types of techniques that it is to do and some old techniques and some new techniques that we did to make this. But we took something here that, uh, you know, was useless. It was, nobody would ever want to sit on it. I think an old, a dog maybe wouldn't want to sit on it, but uh, we made it very nice again that it could come right into the home and look great. It would fit a, 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 in a very nice home. So, you know, uh, it takes years and years to learn these things and techniques to do. Um, but, you know, I, uh, looking back of all the pieces that I've done over the years, and these are always one of the more special ones. It's like, you know, it, it, uh, a child that's the worst behaved one, but sometimes it's the most special one. You know, and this piece was the, when they're the worst shape um, they stand out in your mind and because you take them back from the grave and uh, you know when something's every day and it doesn't really need a uh, need as much work somebody just wants to change the fabric but when something needs a total restoration it's really um, uh, really rewarding you know uh, all the years of working with my father and other people in this in this trade that are gone now some have moved on to easier tray easier jobs but they always kind of come back to this though because it's a special thing uh, trade and 
Uh, it's a respected trade. It's not always the, uh, the easiest road to go down, but it's, um, if some people would want to go into this, um, you know, it'd be, I think they'd really enjoy it. You know, start with your own pieces in your home. Don't go taking pieces um, in from people because you might mess them up and you get in trouble. <laughs> so, you know, it come out really nice though. I think uh, people really will enjoy it. And uh, so we are uh, done with this piece. So I hope you enjoyed it and, and uh, give us some feedback on it and we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.